Gates went on Fox News soon after the story dropped. He's denied the allegations and said this is part of an extortion scheme to get money from his family. But his interview with Tucker Carlson only seemed to raise more questions. I only know what I've read in the New York Times. Uh, I can say that actually you and I went to dinner uh, about two years ago. Your wife was there and I brought a friend of mine, you'll remember her, and she was actually threatened by the FBI, told that if she wouldn't cop to the fact that somehow I was involved in some pay for play scheme, uh, that she could face trouble. And so uh, I do believe that there are people at the Department of Justice who are trying to smear me, uh, you know, providing for flights uh, and hotel rooms rooms for people that you're dating who are of legal age is not a crime. Uh, and I'm just troubled that the lack of any sort of legitimate uh, investigation into me would then permute, would then convert into this extortion attempt. I, I, I don't remember the, the woman you're speaking of or the context at all. Honestly, that was one of the weirdest interviews I've ever conducted. How bad is it for Matt Gates? It's so bad that Tucker Carlson can't follow the threat. So here's the real story. That appears to be some sort of weird cover story. Here's a real story from the New York Times scoop. Quote, investigators are examining whether Gates violated federal sex trafficking laws. So according to three people briefed on the matter, a variety of federal statutes makes it illegal to induce someone under 18 years old to travel over state lines to exchange to engage in sex in exchange for money or something of value. The Justice Department regularly prosecutes such cases and offenders often receive severe sentences. Okay, so now here's the plot twist. Matt Gates, of all the people on the planet, should know precisely how harshly child sex trafficking is treated. It might explain his lone vote against human sex trafficking legislation, but the real reason Matt Gates should know just how harshly federal investigators treat child sex trafficking is because his very, 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 very close friend and political ally, a friend so close that Matt Gates brought this friend with him to the Trump White House, took this picture, is now in jail for violating bond in a case involving child sex trafficking. From that New York Times report, quote, three people said the examination of Mr. Gates, 38, is part of a broader investigation into a political ally of his, a local official in Florida named Joel Greenberg, who was indicted last summer on an array of charges, including sex trafficking of a child and financially supporting people in exchange for sex, at least one of whom was an underage girl. Greenberg has pleaded not guilty to those charges. Now, we've gone from talking about Matt Gates as someone so disdainful of his constituents that he wore a gas mask to mock COVID protections, someone so full of hate for his own Republican colleagues who had the courage to call out Donald Trump for inciting the deadly insurrection, that he traveled to Wyoming in the middle of a pandemic to attack Liz Cheney, to someone who is now under investigation, one launched by Bill Barr's DOJ for child sex trafficking. Bill Barr's DOJ let a lot of bad guys get away with a lot of stuff. But here we are. Joining our conversation, Katie Benner, one of the reporters whose byline is on that story that broke the Gates News yesterday from the New York Times, joins us. Also joining us, Joyce Vance, former U.S. attorney. And Matt Miller's here, former chief spokesman for the Justice Department. Lucky for us, all three MSNBC contributors. Katie Benner, I start with you. And if you could just make sense of what Matt Gates is talking about it seems unrelated whether or not someone i, I mean what, what what is what is he talking about with tucker carlson and in these other interviews sure and i believe the washington post has just broken some more news on this um extortion plot that matt gates talked about last night on tucker carlson but what he is alleging is that several months after the justice department opened up an investigation into his sexual conduct and whether or not it viol violates federal law that somebody local um, in northern florida found out about this and said that, you know, he could make the investigation go away in exchange for a huge sum of money for $25 million. And that is what Gates contends. Now, it seems as though what Gates is trying to say is that the people involved in this extortion plot somehow also created the extortion and somehow created the sex trafficking investigation simply to be able to extort money from him. The timeline makes that seem very improbable. However, that seems to be his claim. Now, keep in mind, again, as you emphasized many times, this was an investigation begun at the Justice Department under Bill Barr, 
knowingly, because all investigations of this caliber of an official so high profile do need to be run by the top officials in the Justice Department and signed off on. And so I, it's hard to believe that that Bill Barr himself was involved in a plot simply to extort Matt Gates's family seven months later. Yeah, I mean, look, M Matt Miller, the, the, we're also in a situation where one is not related to the other. And the timeline, as Katie Benner um, points out, is undeniable. And there's some great Orlando Sentinel reporting about Matt Gates, very, very, very good friend, someone so close that he brought him with him from Florida to travel to Donald Trump's White House. This is Joel Greenberg, who we mentioned. This is from the Orlando Sentinel. Joel Greenberg resigned as tax collector in June after he was arrested at his home by federal agents. He faces 14 charges, including allegations that he stalked a political opponent, illegally used a state database to create fake IDs, and sex trafficked a minor. Federal prosecutors charge that Greenberg used his access as an elected official to a confidential state databases to look up information about a girl between the ages of 14 and 17 with whom he was engaged in a sugar daddy relationship. Several formal employees told the Orlando Sentinel that Greenberg often mentioned how he and Gates were close friends and that the congressman would often visit him at his Lake Mary home. So the intersection between the Joel Greenberg investigation and what we learned from Katie and Mike Schmidt's reporting yesterday in the New York Times is the specific line here of sexual relationships with girls who are underage. And the sex trafficking seems to be the most serious sort of implication for Matt Gates. What do you make of what you've seen so far? Um, look, I, I will say, first of all, I think it should go without saying that you can both be the victim of a crime and a criminal yourself. The fact that uh, there may be a, uh, there may very well be a real extortion plot against Matt Gates uh, would do nothing to um, uh, w would have nothing to do with the underlying fact of whether he committed a crime or not in, in committing sex trafficking. Uh, with a minor. Um, I, I think when you look at this investigation, the fact that it did grow out of this investigation into his, uh, a close friend of his who has already been indicted, if I, if I had to guess what prosecutors are doing here, obviously they're examining Gates's uh, activity. I'm sure they're examining uh, financial transactions, looking at travel he might have paid for. I suspect they have either talked to or tried to talk to the minor. But that ultimately the thing they're really going for in the case is having thrown all these very serious charges against Greenberg, they're going to try to flip him and get him to testify uh, against his good friend, the Congressman Matt Gates. I, I, I would bet that at the end of the line, that's where they're trying to go with this investigation. And if I was Gates, that would be the thing uh, I, I would be most worried about. And, and I would just say one final piece. You know, the way he has behaved in the last 24 hours since this news broke, kind of flailing around on Fox, Fox News uh, and in multiple, uh, you know, interviews with, uh, with with reporters, kind of, you know, it, it implicating himself or raising charges that haven't been publicly alleged against him, uh, trying to implicate Tucker Carlson in, 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 in his own behavior. Um, shows you the, the, a person who is panicking under the spotlight. Um, and I don't think that speaks very well about, the, about how he might you know, handle this investigation as it moves forward. Well, Joyce, I was wondering that, um, and it looked like Tucker Carlson might have been wondering that, did he become a witness if Matt Gates was saying, you saw me with this girl, we had dinner with you and your wife? It was really hard to tell what Gates was trying to do in that interview. He looked a lot like someone who desperately needs a lawyer to make sure he doesn't put himself in, into more trouble than he's already in. And something that fascinated me in that interview, Nicole, was at one point he talked about FBI agents trying to interview this supposed girlfriend, and he used language that has nothing to do with sex trafficking. He said that they wanted to talk with her about pay to play. That's language that prosecutors use when they're talking about public corruption, about politicians who insist on being paid or compensated in order to take official action. So uh, nothing that we heard in that interview with Tucker Carlson really made sense, and it certainly didn't benefit uh, Gates. I want to ask you, Katie Benner, about some more of what you guys originally reported, because it feels really important to the story that this was an investigation under rules that were, um, I don't know if changed is the right word, but enhanced under Bill Barr. He demanded that any investigation into a political figure, and I imagine his workforce heard that as meaning especially politicians in the Republican Party, especially Republican politicians, very, very, very close to Donald Trump. And in the case of Matt Gates, you know, maybe another um, 
person who functioned almost in the same way Donald Trump Jr. did politically and, and in a public relations way. Barr was briefed on this case. Is that right? Tell me what you understand about the Barr Justice Department's leadership's role in opening and pursuing this investigation. So you're right that Barr would have known about this. In, in February of 2020, he sent a note to all federal prosecutors saying, if you're going to investigate any of the candidates in the upcoming election, main justice and official need to be notified immediately. He also said that other prominent politicians needed also to be vetted in the same way, and that would include members of Congress. He said that people needed to be notified, including the U.S. attorney in the office uh, of the district over where the investigation was taking place, that the proper official at the Justice Department, either the head of national security or the criminal division, would also need to be notified. And then he said, as best practice, the deputy attorney general and the attorney general should also be notified. And if you know anything about the Justice Department under Bill Barr, it is that he was a real micromanager, and he would have wanted to know everything. So even though he said it would be best practice, that was his way of saying, please, you would better notify my office. We have also verified that his office was indeed notified, that he heard about the allegations, that he knew about the investigation. He knew what the FBI had already found in relation to the Greenberg investigation. And he felt that it was a strong enough set of allegations, very serious and very troubling, that investigators both the FBI and then, of course, the prosecutors in the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Central District of Florida should proceed. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.